You know, one of the things that uh, we're hearing a lot today in the news is that uh, the big fears are there's going to be a second wave of the coronavirus. And what the conventional wisdom is, is that the markets are going to take a massive hit from this second wave. But the reality is, is that this is information that we already know. So it's my opinion that at this point, a lot of that stuff's already priced in. So I, I really think that, that a, a second wave of corona is not going to have as big of an impact in the market as people think. The second thing is, is that there's massive stimulus being pumped in the economy right now. So the government's doing everything it can to stimulate our economy. And I think that's going to have a, a much greater impact down the road with regards to this recovery. The other thing is, is that, you know, with interest rates being so low at this point, investors need to get return and they're not going to get that return in their money market accounts. So at some point, a lot of these folks that are sitting on the sidelines have to get back in. And then finally, companies are in survival mode at this point. And I think Wall Street's not really looking at the next quarter. I think they're looking at the next six to nine months and uh, already becoming very optimistic. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, a lot of folks are trying to look out to even 2021 because they're just writing off this first half of the year or even the second half, as you mentioned, the second wave. Um, hopefully it won't be as bad as the first part of this year. And hopefully we're a little more advanced in, in the, you know, the combat against COVID-19. I know that you're, you have an interest in J.P. Morgan, right? I mean, the financials, certainly the valuations seem to be better. They were at a pretty good place on the balance sheet. Why a name like J.P. Morgan? Well, I mean, I think, I think J.P. Morgan, when it comes to the financials, is the biggest name out there. Um, you know, they, they've certainly, uh, certainly down, earnings have been down in the financial sector as a whole. But, you know, the thing I really like to focus on is that it's really undervalued at this point. You know, trading at a PE of 10 times forward earnings. The other thing is it's still paying a great dividend. You're still getting 3.67%, which uh, last time I checked is about 367% better than what you can get in cash right now. And the other thing is, is that, you know, with rates being low right now, I think at some point rates will have to go up. So I think in the long term, this is a good play because with the rates going up, you're going to see much more profitability. And so I said, I see what you're saying. You're picking J.P. Morgan because it's the best of the bunch. And I mean, and Jamie Dimon really has been a real leader, not only just for the financial community, but for our economy and working with the administration. Um, you know, do you like his leadership, too? I do. I think, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, his conference calls, he's been a real hero for the industry. Uh, I've been personally listening to him for the past few weeks. And, uh, you know, not only has he been very inspiring to his own people, but, you know, us, us to us folks that are in the industry in general. Very practical advice. Tell me more about uh, another pick of yours, and that is Medtronic. Um, this is a completely different area. You know, you talk about medical instruments and um, development and looking to the future. And Medtronic has always been notorious for doing that. Tell me why you like Medtronic. Well, you know, they, they first of all, they've got 50% market share in the core heart devices, so pacemakers. Um, they're a market leader in other areas, too. So they're not putting all their eggs in one basket. They're market leaders in areas such as spinal products and things like insulin pumps. But, you know, the thing I really like about them now is that, you know, from a valuation standpoint, they're not necessarily cheap, but they're still data trading down 23% from their 52-week high. So I do think it's a good buy here. And furthermore, today, uh, they actually came out with earnings and they did miss their projections. So shares are, are trading down even lower. Uh, and then finally, uh, again, a good dividend payer. So always like dividend payers. You know, you can have a better outcome with income, as I say. 